Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're playing with Raspberry Pi cameras today, and it's a fun project. So, if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a Hire Us button up at the top. If you want to support this channel another way, just some affiliate links down below, get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about this on this channel. And uh, this is kind of a fun one, and now that camera's just dangling upside down like this. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi MI project, and it's really slick. So installation is no brainer. It's over on GitHub. It's the Motion iOS and it's made for single board computers. I'm using Raspberry Pi because that's what I'm familiar with. That's what I'm used to. Uh, they work rather well and I have some other projects and well, I had some of these laying around, but let's talk about the hardware that's on here uh, first. So we'll jump over all the way to the hardware here. Standard Raspberry Pi 4 kit. Now I grabbed the 4 gig kit um, because the 4 gig kit is a handy for lots of other projects, but it is not necessary. Matter of fact, my sump pump camera that I've been running for a while runs on a Raspberry Pi 3 and works quite well. This is the camera that is attached to the Raspberry Pi 4 right now, and pretty simple. I'll leave a link to this one. It's got the focus wide angle fisheye lens. That's why it kind of has a little bit of distortion when you're looking at it. Then I have this camera attached to a Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's got a couple different cables that came with it as well, some longer, some shorter. It's a cute little camera, it does the trick, got pretty reasonable uh, resolution here. The downside is it's attached to a Raspberry Pi Zero, and while this project does support the Pi Zero, it does not work very well. So let's go ahead and jump all the way over back to the MI and talk about what do you got to do to get this and to get it set up. So they have a wiki and installation instructions in here, and I'll leave a link to all this. It's all on GitHub and pretty straightforward. They got Windows instructions, they have OS X, Linux instructions. And I really like this right image tool that they have. And this is what I used actually. Uh, we went and grabbed a release that matched. So they have all the releases. I'll leave a link to these. They have Banana Pi, Nano Pi, Odroid, uh, Orange Pi, Pine 64, Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, and 4 on here. The Pi Zero also shares the same uh, processor, so the Raspberry Pi and the Pi Zero, um, we have, we're using that image on there. The advantage they have of this little write image tool is uh, you just put dash N for networking and your net to your SSID colon the password to your SSID, so your Wi-Fi credentials. This is really nice because when you're building the micro SD cards that go in there, you just write this and it pushes the settings right there, it boots up and that's it. They'll get an IP address. They boot relatively quick. The first boot on the Raspberry Pi 4 maybe takes 30 seconds and probably about 15 to 20 seconds every boot thereafter once it's uh, configured. Now, as far as once they're booted up, what do you have to do next? Nothing really other than start logging in and configuring them, but there's very little to do. It auto detects the camera and auto detects everything. Now, if you want to look in your DHCP server, you can find them, uh, find the IP address. If you plug in a HDMI cable to see what comes out of them, yes, you can watch it display the IP address on the screen or go back over here to the installation. If you want to statically assign each one an IP address, you can actually set static and push uh, exact IP address you want on here. Out of the box, it's going to set it in like the Raspberry Pi 4, for example, or the 3, um, any of the ones that have a network adapter on them, it will just have that at DHCP, so it'll grab whatever available address is handed out from your network. Back over to configuration here. So when you want to configure them, we'll go ahead and uh, refresh the page. The default password is just admin, no password. So there's not even a password, not admin, admin, it's just admin. Now, it lets you set a password. You can uh, definitely make changes to it and everything else, but the default is just admin, and it works. There's not much to it. And then we go over here to settings, and it's called camera one. We'll show you, show you why in just a second. So camera one, admin, user, here's where we can set a password. Uh, it can check to do OS version updates. Um, I had mine out from under my house uh, when I did mine because it decided it was running an old version. The update failed, but it seemed to work on these newer ones. So they've seemed to have fixed that problem on there. There's your network settings. I've got it connected um, wirelessly. So I just push the settings in there and IP configuration automatic. Once again, once you've got it set up and running, you can change these settings if you need to. Services, FTP server, require FTP authentication, FTP write support, uh, Samba server, requires Samba authentication, and enable Samba write support, and SSH server. What this allows you to do is you can actually have it store all the videos on here, and then you can just use a Samba share, FTP, or SSH to get the information out. Now they have expert settings for network link watch, network timeout, and even SNNTP for the date method, NTP server, um, HTTP port, what the motion binary is, 
uh, motion keep alive debugging. So they got a couple other neat features inside of here. Fast camera support, I didn't find that very helpful. Um, it's supposed to, and you got a little mouse over for any one of these. Enabling this option will Raspberry Pi into a simple, fast MPEG network camera, uh, disabling motion detection, media files, and all other advanced features with this camera. Um, it's supposed to make it a little bit faster if you want to use this as a media camera. I may do that a separate video. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to keep it focused on this. And we'll call this one, instead of camera on, Res Cam 4. Just make it simple. And anytime it detects a change, you just hit apply. And it'll rename the camera. It doesn't restart it, it just restarts the services running, so it doesn't even go through a full reboot. Um, and there we go, now we've renamed the camera. And let's crank up the resolution on that. So let's go ahead and move the resolution all the way up to here. And let's crank the frame rate here. Now this is one advantage the Raspberry Pi 4 has. The frame rate is not wonderful on my Raspberry Pi 3. It's good. Uh, the frame rate is absolutely terrible on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. It just doesn't do a great job at all. We'll get to that one in a second. Now here's all the file storage options on here. Uh, custom path where it's going to take all the files. Uh, we've got a 32 gig card in here. It's got 28.2 gigs free. Um, upload media files if you want to have your server to upload them to Google Drive. SFTP server. You can actually have it automatically copy the data to somewhere else, even a Dropbox integration on here. So they thought of a lot of different services to get that get the data back out. Uh, include subfolders and upload pictures, upload media files. We're going to turn it back off right now. Call a webhook. This is really cool too because you can actually say, hey, when there's something to do, call a webhook and push this information there. So that's an option. Text overlay, what do you want it to say? The camera name and a timestamp. Not too many options in there, but you can do some custom text or disable it. And it's got some text scaling, so you can make it whatever size you want and hit apply. And the service restarts and ups the scale of the text, so we can have larger text on there. Video streaming. So you can do this and copy, and we'll go ahead over here. And now it's streaming right to this particular just like that, port 881. This allows you, if you wanted to pull, use this as a camera and pull it into something else that can pull a uh, stream, that is absolutely possible with that. Now they also have uh, embed, whoop, not that one there, embed, there we go. And this just makes it look a little bit nicer and it has frame embedding here. So it makes it look a little bit slicker because it's just wrapping around there. And like I said, more customization you could do and embed this in something if you wanted to make it as a monitor. So go down here, still image support to grab still images out of here, and you can make the capture mode forever, trigger. And if you notice when we're on the camera, there's options uh, to, let me do the mouse over. There we go. Open movies in browser, open pictures in browser, configure this camera. There's some options to make it grab the camera and uh, pull those settings on there for that. So if you want to uh, capture stills out of it, it does have that ability. Now let's go back down here. Let's look at the movies. Now this is where it's kind of cool. Motion triggered movies, continuous recording, and let's say we want to keep something for uh, one week. It lets you know it'll recursively purge everything out, but this can be used as a motion triggered camera and it'll save all the information that you need for the motion detection. And of course, if motion detection happen, what good is that if it doesn't send you an email, call a webhook, run a command? So this having a, you know, Linux in the back end, you could write your own custom commands of what you want this to do if one of these events occur, uh, calling a webhook. So reach out to this particular website with a git post post form, post via JSON, you can have a couple different options on here and send that notification somewhere. Um, or of course, this is the real simple one here, send an email, uh, SMT server report, password, user address, use TLS, and it can send you a notice with the information in there and uh, auto attach pictures. So maybe that's of course a real important, you don't just want to notice, you also would like a picture sent of what's happening. And they have uh, run an end command. So after it does this and do another command after that. So a lot of options they built into this and you can just turn them on and off kind of as needed, just like that. Now, one of the other things we go back over here to like motion detection, we have a working schedule and that's a nice important feature. So you can build working hours in here for your motion detection and say, this is when I want it. This is when I don't want the motion detection to work. The final thing I'll mention here is that we do have not just a mask, we have an editable mask. 
for doing this. They've even built that in here. I mean, so we can build a mask of where we want it to detect motion. So if you use this as a motion camera and you have something that would trigger it because maybe it's catching the side of a row going out there, it does have an editable mask option in here for the motion detection to make it that much more detailed. It's a pretty impressive camera setup here and the resolution, like I said, is very reasonable. So these are all the features on here, but then there's one more. Let's look at the other camera. So that's actually running over here. This is the uh, Pi Zero cam. Now, I said that it's kind of slow. So I cranked the resolution all the way up to 19, 20, 10, 80. Yes, that is at that motion, but we're gonna do this. And uh, I don't know how many seconds go, went just by, but it'll eventually <laughs> take another picture and move. Oh, there we go. So there's quite the delay when the Pi Zero is at that. It just doesn't have the horsepower to do it. So we bump it down to 640 by 480. Wow, some old school low res. And you can see how much longer it takes to apply even a setting on here. Still not quite real time, but functional. And this other camera by comparison, if you were looking for two different cameras, this camera works pretty well, but this one does not have the fisheye. The one thing I did notice about this camera, and it's not just because it's at the 640, when you compare it to the other camera, the colors are more muted. They seem to be a little bit uh, brighter, more brilliant on the other camera, uh, this one here. Even when I had this camera, I have swapped both of them back and forth onto the Raspberry Pi 4. And this camera is, that's a little bit more expensive, that other one I showed with the fish eye on it, definitely has like a sharper, better colors to it uh, for what it's worth. Now, because this is at 172, 116, 69, 113, what can we do with this add camera option? Well, this is where it gets kind of slick. We go over here and we're gonna do the Raspberry Pi 4 because it's faster. You can build these together and tie together multiple of these. And we'll go here, we're gonna add a camera. And it does have a couple other options here. I don't have a USB camera. Webcams are in really short supply in here in April of 2020. I just don't have an extra one laying around. But it actually has some options to uh, find local cameras plugged into USB. I may do a follow-up video if I find some USB cameras that work well with this. Um, it has a network camera option a remote motion eye camera option, which means another one of them. And we put the username and password in. We haven't set a password on it, so it's just admin, so we're just gonna leave it like this. Hit okay. It finds the camera that's attached to that, or cameras attached to that server, and we hit okay. And we've tied two cameras together and started to build our dashboard with this. Pretty simple to do, takes very little to get this going. Now granted, these are all simply writing to the Pi itself, so there's not much redundancy and all that if you wanted to build this out kind of as your camera system, but with the ability for this to FTP and send the data to some other storage repository on your network, you could easily build some type of NAS server and have all the motion events sent to there and cataloged and logged, and it's kind of a nice homebrew system um, that works really well. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is the system that I have at home. So I'll close these. And what does my sump pump camera, you know, and why did I kind of do this project and how did it work? So let's go over and uh, VPN back to my house. And this is the one running on my Raspberry Pi 3. It does have a password on there. I did go through and set it up. It's got the same options here and we'll go ahead and log into it real quick. And on a Raspberry Pi 3, actually, it seems to work quite well. Now the difference is in the one I have at home, and this is an interesting thing, because of the way my sump pump is set up at home, this is in the dark, there's no lights down there. So this is down under my house. This is how it's mounted and I have this long cable here. This is what the little bracket looks like that just watches the pump. Yes, I have a water alarm on there for those of you wondering why I'm obsessed with this. I've had the water alarm fail once, so I just check the camera once in a while. I can see exactly what the pump's doing and if there's a, a serious amount of flow in there or something's going wrong. And this is how it looks like when it's set up on there. Now you can order these uh, with an extra long cable like this if you have some unique use case like you know, watching a sump pump under your house. And I just mounted it on a little bracket. Yes, there's some zip ties on there because we tried 3D printing something, it didn't work. And what the lights are on the side, let me show you what those are. This is what you actually are looking at. This is a night vision camera. And this is a neat feature, I bought this. Okay, now I know exactly how long. It's been one year ago that I've had this because I bought this uh, sump pump camera in April 2nd of 2019 and we built this. And with the camera right here, and the night vision attached to it, it works really well. It sees completely in the dark. So let's go back over to what it looks like here. Oh, it looks the camera, the sump pump uh, 
just ran so you can kind of see it. Now, you don't get the best frame rate out of the Raspberry Pi 3. It's definitely an improvement when you go to the Raspberry Pi 4, but this is in 100% darkness. This is what those IR filters look like, so I can look, it's looking down on the sump pump, and I, like I said, I can see in there, and it works wonderful for seeing in the dark. These are pretty slick cameras, and it's all of $21, and Raspberry Pi 3, I had one laying around, and uh, but they're obviously not real expensive, so it's a pretty neat project. And it's been a lot of fun to play with. There's all kinds of ideas, you know, if you have different things you want to watch around the house or set up motion cameras. And you could theoretically put these in probably some type of waterproof, uh, you know, outdoor type of structure and then run just one single network card or one network cable over there and use one of these, you know, like a Pi hat or even the little adapter that I have. And I'll leave a link to this in uh, the description below where you can get all these parts. But it makes for a pretty fun little project uh, with these Raspberry Pis. It's definitely cool. I'm going to play with, see what other things I can uh, find on these. If I do find some cameras, because the Raspberry Pi 4 having a few different USB ports means I could probably find a couple other cameras and see how uh, how well it handles it for surveillance. But either way, I'll leave a link to all this. It's all open source. It's all free. And uh, the Raspberry Pis are just fun little kits to play with. I always, like, I always get excited about some of these projects. And I'll admit, this particular one with the this camera, the way the the little transparent thing that this came with is uh, pretty neat, but I will admit, these are tedious. If you see how small this is, I I mean, it makes a nice little camera sitting there like that, but boy, these are not easy to work with putting this together. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.